Hello, and thank you so much for listening to the Teacher Business Podcast with me, your favorite English instructor, Professor Ashan R. Hampton. Right now, it is December the 15th, 2021, Wednesday. It is now 5.51 a.m. I have been up for about an hour. Building a business takes commitment. If I had an eight to five job, then I would be doing this with minutes to spare to get dressed and get out of the house. Right now, I am debating on whether to take a substituting job because the only thing available is a second grade elementary class, and I do not want to fool with second graders right now. I still have this podcast and one more podcast to record for this series. So if I were on a full-time job or even on a substitute job, I would still be obsessing over my need to record these podcasts for social marketing to scale my business and to increase exposure for my business. This is the mind chatter that goes on with a business owner. So you might be saying, oh, I'm just setting up an online business for passive income. But you still have to market it. You have to get the word out. You have to make it profitable. So if you are building a business and working a full-time job or a job that gets you up really early in the morning, (laughs) you are making a commitment that hopefully you will be rewarded for. These are the types of sacrifices that make people quit trying to have a business. You hear about the great resignation and people are leaving their jobs to take on entrepreneurial endeavors. Well, what about the people who tried it and are now trying to go back to the workforce? Because I have been thinking about that and planning for that for 2022 to get this business up and running, build all of my assets so that I can go back to the workforce and my online business can do passive income for me. Why? Because I need steady income to stop stressing out about finances. And that's perfectly okay. So yes, the upside to being your own boss and having your own business is that you don't have other people breathing down your neck and micromanaging you. But the downside is that you have to manage yourself, even if you feel motivated or not. I have not felt motivated to record these final two podcasts all week. But this morning, I got up with the intention to get this done. So building a business takes discipline. It takes internal discipline. For example, what is your morning routine? Although I say I really don't have a morning routine because I'm a Gemini and I don't like the stricture of routine, I typically get up between 4 and 5.30 in the morning. The alarm definitely goes off at 5.30 a.m., A second alarm goes off at 6 a.m. Yes, I have to have two alarms. And sometimes I will sleep through both of them. The first one is really loud, so I have to roll over and turn it off. But the second one at 6 a.m., I could sleep right through. If I sleep past 6 a.m., my whole day is unproductive. What about you? What makes you more productive in the morning? So typically I will get up. I will either drink some hot tea or I will juice some natural juice, something with beets in it to get my energy going. I will do between 20 and 30 minutes of exercise, light exercise, just to get me up and moving. I will say prayers and affirmations. Most days, sometimes I jump right into getting dressed and doing for my business what I need to do. In the winter months, I usually get up and make a cup of cocoa, and then I'll just sit for seven minutes, drink the cocoa, and just ruminate on what I need to get done for the day. However you wake up will set the tone for the rest of your day. And if you oversleep, it will be so much more difficult for you to get your sluggish body up and going. So I find that the earlier I wake up, the more productive I will be. So it is now 
5.56 a.m. I have decided that I need to go ahead and get things done for my online business as opposed to going and making pennies substitute teaching. Another upside to being your own boss and opening a business, particularly an online business, is that you stop trading time for money. I know you've heard that over and over again. Your time is probably worth more than the little money you have been working for. And that is why you're trying to earn more money, you're trying to get promoted, find a different job, or find a sustainable side hustle so that you can have extra income. So that if you decide to quit your full-time gig, then you will have finances to fall back on. I know this. I know this. So what happened to me is that I was forced out of jobs. (laughs) Some jobs I quit and some jobs quit me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So over the past 10 years, if you've been listening to my story from episode one, you will know that I've had several odd jobs, sometimes full-time, sometimes part-time, freelancing, just a little bit here and a little bit there cobbled together to try to make some money while I have been building this business. I have been doing this on faith because I still have not seen any really big returns for all of the work that I have put in over the past 10 years, but I believe that I'm getting close How do I know I'm getting close? Because so many times in these past couple of months, I have just wanted to quit building this and just go find a job somewhere. That's how you know you're getting close to a breakthrough when you absolutely just want to quit. But something in me says, I know you've been doing this for a long time, but keep going, finish it out, see it through, get to the other side of this. Because what a lot of people don't tell you is that it can be a drag, especially if you've been working on something for a very long period of time and you still don't see the harvest, you still don't see the fruit of your labor. What makes you keep going? Well, there is something inside of you that forces you to get up instead of give up. That's been my experience. When you know you are really called to do something, you just cannot give it up. It feels like somebody pushing you, nagging you, like there's this invisible force tapping you on the shoulder, waking you up. It feels like, are you going to do it? 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 Do it now. Do it down. Do it down. Do it down. Do it down. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. That's what it feels like until you finally just get up and do it. Some people try to override that prompting. And when they do, they become very sad, very depressed because it feels like you're missing something. It feels like you have given up something that was really important. And so you can spend your days being depressed or you can spend your days getting up and taking action towards that thing you know that you are being pulled to do. So just when I thought I was finished with all of my business assets, meaning I've created all of the online courses I'm going to create. I've written all of the writing related books that I'm going to write, all of the blank notebooks, all of the merchandise that I am going to create. That to me feels done. Like when all of that is done, I'm going to be done with this business. And then I'll just have to market it. I can just focus on marketing it and getting more exposure for it. But then another list came to me, a list that had me to write these things down, finish podcast episode 106, finish 107. And here's the thing, go back and rebrand your copy editing 101 class. Make sure that it's clear that you're using the AP style format, which is really popular and sometimes required for proofreaders and copy editors. If you go to LinkedIn or Indeed or some sort of job platform and you look up jobs for proofreaders and copy editors, you will more than likely see familiarity with AP format as a requirement. And so in my copy editing class, I do teach that, but I don't think it's very clear that I teach that. So rebrand that class, upload things to my YouTube channel, 
to the community tab. Create a weekly or monthly planner for the year 2022. These are not easy things to do. And I won't get into all of why these are not easy things for me to accomplish. But this is going, these few things that seem so simple will force me to get back on the computer, go back through all of my class materials, try to figure out ways to do this and do that and do that and do this. And a lot of times I just don't have the energy for it. Yesterday, this list came to me and I was like, you know what? I took a nap. I watched TV. I just completely goofed off my whole day yesterday. (laughs) Why did I do that? Because I'm like, this is a lot and I want to be done with this. I want to move on with other areas of my life. Why can't I get finished with this? (laughs) Yeah, that's my internal whiny voice. That's what it sounds like when you are like, oh my God, I've done so much already. Why do I have to do so much more? Well, to whom much is given, much is required. All right, so let's get back to business. My teacher business. But thank you for indulging me. (laughs) I just had to get that out and let you know the realities of creating a business, especially over a long period of time. It galls me. It irks me to hear people say, I started selling blank books a month ago and I already made $10,000. I started selling eBooks. And I made $15,000 in one week, selling them for $30 each. Just all kinds of skeezy, scammy things that people are coming up with. I don't know if they're actually making money from it, but it seems like they're making money from it. But what I'm telling you, and this is what I mentioned in episode one, Teacher Business 101, is that I'm giving you my story, my journey, and the grind that it has taken me to get to this point over a 10-year period since 2011. And I marked that year because it was in July 2011 that I started this YouTube channel. So we have walked through my websites, easyedits.net, arhampton.com, and now we are going to move to onyxedonline.com. But I want to say a few words about your website. And some of you might have discovered the joys of Wix and you can just WYSIWYG it, just plug and play, just find a template and you work that template. Or you might be working with Squarespace, something that gives you some templates. If you are, what you will find is that sometimes you still need to know a little bit of HTML code to get it to do what you really want it to do. In some cases, it still might be necessary for you to hire a web designer. Some of you might say, you know what, I just want it for free. I just want a little blog website for free, but I want to monetize it. Let me go to WordPress. WordPress is a monster, okay? It will require you to know HTML code and some JavaScript in order for you to reap the benefits of a free website through WordPress. And even they have levels of membership where you have to pay monthly fees. So if you're trying to free ball it (laughs) and have a WordPress site, you're still going to have to put some money in it that you are probably going to have more headache than you can imagine. Number one, WordPress, especially the free version, can have lapses. It can go down a lot. Sometimes the plugins can crash, which means that your website will look like things are missing, or sometimes people might not be able to access it on a regular basis. There are some WordPress designers out there, but you have to understand whether or not they are also going to offer you maintenance. Meaning if something happens to your website, will they fix it? Or will you have to do that yourself? Is there a monthly fee or retainer for them to get back on your website after they build it and fix things? If you need to add some text, will you do that? Or will they do that? Do they charge you for adding things to your website? So when you are considering a web designer and building a website, 
it can really get a little complicated. But one thing you want to make sure is that these people are reputable, that they already have a portfolio that you can see. You want to check their prices and you want to understand totally the services they are providing for you for the fee that you are paying. When it comes to your domain name, are they going to register your domain name or are you going to do that yourself? If you allow a web designer to register your domain name and attach it to your website, if they have done it under their own company's name or their own individual credentials, then they own that domain name. So if they go out of business or if they decide they just don't like you anymore and don't want to work with you, your website could potentially be held hostage by that web designer. I have seen it happen. When I worked for a local marketing, digital marketing agency, and I was building websites for people, that came up quite a bit. So make sure that you own your domain name. That means that even if you stop working with this person and you start from scratch with a whole new website with another designer, but you still want that same domain name, make sure that you own it, that it's under your credentials so that you can just transfer that domain name to your new website. That is so important, especially if you've had your domain name for a while and you have used it to brand your business and your services and you really can't afford to lose that domain name, then make sure on the front end that you have registered it yourself under your credentials so that you will always have it. Another thing is to figure out who's going to do maintenance on your website. Is your website on the designer's platform? Is it on their servers? Or is this a Wix site that you have access to? If they designed it from scratch and it's on Bluehost, do you have access to Bluehost? Do you have access to your website? That is highly critical for you to get straight up front. I've never had these issues because I have built my own websites and built websites for other people. But listen to me, these are the things you have to get straight up front before you shop around for a website designer. Also, when you are talking with a designer, you have to know your story. This came up because I was doing a website for a guy who owned a garage door business. They literally built custom garage doors and did other things with doors. So I had to sit with him and get his information to write his about page. Most people already have their bio, their personal bio in their business story that we could easily just put on their about page on their website. This one particular guy had no idea. He was scrambling. He couldn't really remember when the business was started because he took it over. I think his father started it and then he took it over. So he wasn't clear on the year that it got started. He wasn't too sure about who started it. Did his dad do it with another person or just with himself? He just did not know the story of his business. So he had to call some people, let me get back to you. Can we email you? Can we call you with that information? Know your story, especially before you talk with a web designer. You have to have your professional biography mapped out and you need to have the story of your business mapped out. So I'm asking you now, what is your business story? Over these podcasts, I have been telling you my business story. Before an about page, it would be about two healthy paragraphs, five to seven sentences each, explaining the who, what, when, where, why, and how of my business. Remember last episode when I told you that whenever I sit down to record, extra noises pop up? Well, now it's birds. So hopefully you can't hear those little Tweety birds, but they are really loud. (laughs) in my recording space. And if you hear them, I cannot edit them out. But that is what happens when you record so early in the morning. It is now 6.15 a.m. So take a moment to sit down and jot down bullet points of your business story. 
How did you get started? Who are the principal players? What do you do? Get really clear on the products and services that you offer. You have no idea how many times, especially with that guy, with the garage door guy, what do you do? Uh, what do you offer? Uh, doors, garage doors, mainly we do knobs. We do sometimes, uh, home doors, doors. Oh my goodness. (laughs) These seem like simple things. But when you get going on your business, especially if you've been working on it for more than a year or so, these are things you might not have taken time to really sit down and write, but you need to sit down and write this, keep it in a document that you can always go back to and that you can share with people. So when people need to know about you, you have your personal and professional bio. When people need to know about your business, you have that already written out. When people want to know what are your products and services, you are all So very clear about what you offer. This is what I mean. I used to offer proofreading and editing services, but now I am offering online classes. So you have to get clear on what you offer right now and your price points. Get clear on your prices. If you don't have individual prices per product or per service, then have a range. I charge between $250 and $750 for this service, depending on what you need and how complicated your request is. Have that mapped out, especially before you talk to a web designer. Another thing you'll also need to have is your logo. Do you have a business logo that you can give to a designer? Make sure that if it's in transparent ping PNG format, if you want it overlaid on top of another image, JPEG is fine, but that designer will have to figure out how to remove the background and they might charge extra money for that. Get your images together. What images do you want on your website? Make sure that you have that before you start shopping for a web designer. I'm telling you this because these are points of frustration that I experienced as a web designer building small business websites. It was a pain to have to try to chase down this information because people get busy. Why? Because they're doing their business. So have this stuff ready to go before you attempt to build a website. Make sure that your website is pleasing to look at and that the colors match and that they do not cause dissonance with people when they look at it. I have seen some pretty ugly websites. I mean, green, black, red, orange websites. What are you doing with a dash of purple? What is going on? What you think is cute may not look professional, So be ready to accept the advice of the web designer. You want to have a professional look for your website. If you are selling things online and you have an e-commerce site, you want people to feel comfortable putting their payment information into your website forms. So your personal taste may not be the best for a professional website. The way you decorate your house with all kinds of big, bold color and all kinds of shapes and patterns mixed all together is not going to work for a website. Having things flashing and blinking and scrolling on your website, stop that. You don't need all of that. That was all the rage when people were finally figuring out JavaScript and making stuff scroll and blink and all of that. You don't need all of that. I only have a pop-up with coupon codes on my website. So if you have a pop-up or something on your website that's extra, make sure that it's giving a deal, a special, or some important information. So those are some of my best tips for preparing to build your website or preparing to talk to someone about building a website for you. Be clear on what it is you want. Be clear on the web designer's expectations. There needs to be a contract outlining the scope of services. 
This is what the web designer will do. This is what they need from me. It will be completed in this amount of time. There were some people I talked to who waited a full year to get their website up and going. And I was turning them around in two weeks time. I was creating original from scratch small business websites with a 14 day turnaround. Why is it taking a year for you to get your website? What are these people doing? I would say three months tops. Again, if somebody is really diligent and creative and just as with it as I am, you could have a website done in 14 days. (laughs) It also depends on you. Are you asking for changes? Are you overly picky? Are you harassing the web designer? Are you wanting all these sorts of ridiculous modifications? Then that also influences the amount of time it will take for a web designer to get your project fully developed and fully launched. So make sure you're not a picky customer so that you can go ahead and get your business website up on the web. The main reason I stopped working as a freelance web designer is because of ridiculous clients. I didn't have the patience for it. I just, some things are just not worth the money. And so that's why I no longer do freelance websites. But if you go to my website, arhampton.com and click the more button where it says web design, you can take a look at some of the images of websites that I did when I worked full time as a web designer. Okay, thank you so much for listening In the next episode, we are going to talk about my course website, where I actually have the catalog of my courses that I offer as part of my business, Onyx Online Education and Training. Remember, I have been telling you the story of my business building journey, building an online education business since 2011. Oh, I'm getting really close to having it finished. But as you heard at the beginning of the podcast, oh, (laughs) there's always going to be more to do, more that you can revise, that you can make better. And it is that way as you get more knowledge, as you expand your information base about how to run your business, then you will find ways to make it even more efficient and even more streamlined, which makes it easier for people to trust you and support you. It is very easy to go to my website, click and order my books. There's not a lot of verbiage. There's no scammy text. Just click it, order it, it's yours. For my online classes, click a button, read about the class, click it, enter it, take the class, all of the materials are there. You don't have to wait to receive any materials because the class is already done. So over the past 10 years, I've put in a lot of work to make it that easy for people. And do you want to know something? Sometimes people mistrust the ease of buying from me. Some people will send extra emails. Well, what what do I need to do to get this class? Click the button and pay the money. That's it. But like I said, it has taken a lot of work to get that efficient. But when you are building your business, that's how easy you want to make it for people. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you head to my website, www.arhampton.com for my books, online classes, merchandise. Take a look at the blog. There's a lot of good information there. And on the next episode, we're going to talk about my actual course landing page for my online classes. Until the next episode, happy building.